All right, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, welcome to a special Age of Empires 2 game. So, uh, for clarity's sake, this is actually a game one and a best of three. Or no, not a best of three. It's three games played, but I'm too lazy to change what's at the top there till later. Um, and it's in World Rumble Tourney. So shout out to OGN. Everyone say, thanks, OGN. OGN's hosting this. He's a French content creator. Really nice guy. Doing great things for Age of Empires right now. And basically, players are able... Players who play in this event are not in the... I think it's top 16. Or maybe it's top 10. Uh, but you've got a lot of other high-level players competing, obviously. What's exciting about this is... And I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of... Did they save draft... What did the save draft look like? I'm not going to talk about the normal tourney stuff. This is more about the individual game. But in the blue, we have one of the best archer players in the world in Sato. And then we also have one of the best archer sieves. If not, maybe there's no dispute, the best archer sieve in Britain's. Okay? Uh, their archer ranges work faster. They get plus one range on their archer starting in Castle Age. Additional range in Imp. Their TCs are cheap. So their economy is insane because they can add the cheap town centers. Britons are, I think, undisputably at least the most iconic archer sieve in the game. Everyone knows about those longbows. So you have that, and there's a lot of matchups where you're up against Ethiopians, and they fire faster, or you're up against Italians, and they get more armor. And still, at the end of the day, you just look at it, and you say, well, you know what? That Briton range is pretty darn strong. However, Vietnamese isn't talked about a lot. So let's, let's discuss it right now. So first off, one thing you should take advantage of if, with Vietnamese, at least in a tournament setting, is you know where the opponent's TC is. So you know where the opponent's TC is. Uh, Zupi ran forward to try and steal some resources. Unfortunately, didn't find any. But that's a bonus for the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese then do not have to pay... Oh, God, I always forget. I think it's wood for their eco upgrades, which is an underrated eco bonus. So that's quite strong for them when it comes to Feudal Age and beyond. And then they have higher HP on their ranged units. And they have access to Imperial Skirm. So they've got, like, tankier Skirms. Much stronger Skirmishers. Not to mention their unique unit, the Rats and Archer. Yes, it's good against other things like Cav. But it's like an anti-Archer Archer. So I like the Vietnamese as a sieve. Like, I find them very interesting. I am critical of devs, of course, many times. But I think that Vietnamese are just... To have an anti-archer archer sieve is just really cool. And this is before you talk about elephants and, like, the other things that maybe Vietnamese could do. We're talking mainly archers now. So, it's a fun matchup. And, like, uh, as Zupi talks about a bug he experienced because he could see his opponent's sheep moving. And that, yes, that was a recent bug. Um, anyways, it's unimportant. I, I really like the pick here against the Britons. Of course, at times, you don't necessarily know who you're going to go up against. But maybe he expected it. All right, so, uh, Zupi actually opened up with three on wood here. And many of you, I should probably talk about Zupi a little bit, might not know Zupi too well. Uh, there was a time back in, like, 2016 when Zupi was seen as the best player in Finland. Nowadays, it's probably Velez. If you follow the competitive scene, he's a top tenor, no doubt. Uh, Max has fallen off a little bit, but there was a time where Max was the top. <clears throat> You've got other names out there, like Valis and Rubenstock. Finland is stacked, but... Zupi, uh, as far as I'm aware, he's a, he's a working man. He's like many of you guys out there. He's got a job, maybe other obligations, but still competes in events, still plays very well. And uh, I, li I like to watch Zupi play. It's always good to see him play. I remember the days, like, we're all getting old now, right? But I remember the days where, like, a lot of these guys that have jobs or in school or whatever right now had nothing to do and just played for, like, 10 hours all the time. <laughs> and look at this pressure here from his opponent. Sato comes in, and what a beautiful little play from Sato. <clears throat> this meta really suits a toe because it's highly micro-intensive. He came forward with two militia and a scout, and this is as Zupi wanted to go up the next age. Getting some damage in on the scout, and this isn't necessarily meant to kill, but obviously if you do kill, you're going to feel great about it. It's meant to control. Zupi not liking how this is open so far, I'm sure. Stressful stuff as he's on the way to feudal. Now, the other thing I didn't mention about Britons is they also... They eat sheep faster. So you can make these militia, which are food cost. And then you can just go right up to Feudal Age after it. Uh, the really strong build order here for Sato. I feel like you could have killed a villager, actually. Loom was very late for Zupi. So maybe he didn't take the engagement that he, he would have wanted. But 
Zupi kept his scout alive. Zupi has to keep an eye on this stuff, and he's making his own militia now. Something Sato also sees. I <laughs> wish I had nothing to do but play. <laughs> I'm sure Zupi does as well, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know. I, I, I'm not, like, super close with Zupi. I do talk to him from time to time, but I'm not really sure of the situation. But I can tell you that right now, we've seen bonuses pay off for Britons, and there are many bonuses to come. Remember, though, you don't have to spend the wood on your wood upgrade or your farm upgrade or any eco upgrade with Vietnamese. That's a pretty big deal when you've been off wood and you want to make an archery range. There he adds the archery range. Look, he wouldn't be able to get double bid axe right away if he wasn't Vietnamese. Here he comes. He's going to go forward. Now, Sato has tracked this. Unfortunately for him, the lion doesn't like him. So he's going to have to deal with that. That will be unfortunate. But Sato knows this is coming. So Sato, walling up, almost gets woo-woo-wooed. And you look at his barracks now, and he's got another militia in there. So he wants to match this. Still doesn't actually see the units, but he did sense them here. And that's good walling from him, as he will go for his own range. So far, so good for Zupi, I'd say, all things considered. He even could afford the farm upgrade, guys. Which is very rare off of these types of builds. But I have been seeing it more and more these days. I think meta has definitely become more eco-focused. The downside of rushing the farm upgrade with the wood upgrade on archer builds or man at arm builds is that your fletching is going to be delayed. So we'll keep an eye on that. But so far, extremely technical and aggressive. As both players go into one range, but again... Advantage Zupi temporarily because he's faster to the to the army numbers, but the archer range works faster for the Britons. So it should be an easy little catch up here for Sato. All right, so uh, here's the here's one archer. Right, we look at home. Is there a blacksmith yet? No, no blacksmith. No blacksmith yet. Early pressure from Zupi. I think is definitely the slower of the two, but he's got the stronger army. Sato knows it. And Sato is a big micro -er, so he should be able to pull the weak villager back. Look at that. You see that? He just helps himself in what ways he can there. I think you do have to question the third militia, honestly. You could always say that maybe he should have done more damage early, but it's so tough. They've obviously got to execute with everything else. Maybe you're seeing that Zupi struggles a bit more with the micro-oriented stuff because he doesn't, he, he couldn't create a villager there. Look at Sato with the micro. Oh my goodness. That was so slick from Sato. Like, 2 OKD right now. Pushback Man-at-Arms also has Fletching. Again, keeping in mind, he didn't get Horse Collar. Horse Collar is 75 wood and 75 food. A Sato, another kill. So it doesn't really feel like um, it's that much, but that delays a Blacksmith. And it also delays uh, the food for researching Fletching from the eventual Blacksmith. So he kind of switched the order, I guess. He's going to get Horse Collar now. I feel like there's certain pros who would, which would dispute getting into this point. We won't talk about that. What we will talk about is that the skirmishers have 36 HP for Vietnamese. And the archers have 36 HP for Vietnamese. So you've got a 6 HP difference, which means you can survive an extra hit right now. So I think it's fair to say that the micro is better for Sato. But Zupi, he's still going to be in a good position with the Vietnamese. As he gets Fletching, and he's now going to research armor, and of course the Militia is still getting a little bit of value. A good job with the Militia here from Sato, as he keeps the Archer safe. Now guys, if the opponent's making Skirmishers, this is like an obvious question. I hate to treat you like I'm like some teacher teaching third graders. But if your opponent is making a lot of Skirms, or going into Skirms, what are you going to want to make? Okay, I'm just going to answer the question. You're going to want to make Scouts, right? Like, in theory. So what a, play a lot of players do is they will make a mix of archers and they will make a mix of skirms. That way, scouts are less effective. So, um, you know, at this level, like right now, Sato is going to show the skirm, right? This is a good good army to hold and defend. And then behind it, he's probably going to make some archers. Also, the man-at-arms here denying some walls. Totally missed that. So, I think a big reason to switch into scouts is probably if your civilization is more suited towards stable units in the long term. Um, that you're going to lean more towards doing that and not what I just said, if that's the case. Zupi, of course, being Vietnamese, really wants to make ranged units. Love how he has Town Watch right now so he can see what's up if the pressure comes in. And he's kind of just waiting on his hill and Sato is looking 
He's he's protecting this. He doesn't want any armies to sneak in. So he's checking to make sure he's walled. And now he sees where Zupi is and what Zupi's up to. Now, Sato could kind of force the issue right now if he wanted to. He definitely has a stronger army, but not doing that. As Zupi says, all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring our skirms home as we wall up. And he's going to separate with the archers now. Yeah, and you can make your own skirms to match their skirms as well. It does depend how you want to view it, but I think if you're Britain's Vietnamese, it makes sense to continue with range units. And look at Sato. It's like he expected this. But if you look at the worker efficiency last minute, that's going to dip down a little bit for Sato because of that. And Zupi trying to race to castle. Very risky when you're up against range units. He uh, sells his stone. This is a very common thing for the super open maps. That allow you to race the castle age and he buys food. It's kind of a new meta thing. Like with this map, like this map is honestly disgusting. There's hills everywhere. Are you really going to be able to boom that easily anyways? Zupi will be happy to see the skirms are here. And he's, he will be happy that he didn't lose any of these archers as he's still trying to click up here. But Sato without the market will probably click up here in just a second as well. Yeah, of the stable units, we'll just talk about that real quick. Uh, Vietnamese actually do have these slightly better stable units because they get bloodlines. They get really good elephants. Not something you see in 1v1s. It's more of a community game style or Black Forest thing. But anyways, if you want to switch into cap, both civs are decent. You do get full armor for both of them. And while Britons don't get bloodlines, which gives you extra HP on the cap, you, they do actually get full attack and armor. So, What's happening here for Sato? What the... <laughs> What's happening there? It's, okay, I think he was maybe microing here. And he thought he patrolled, but he really should have killed some archers here. Giving me anxiety watching this. Kill an archer, man! Please kill an archer. The the lion is helping. Anyways, a big army here for Zupi. He really caught up there. And he will be faster to castle age by 30 seconds. He did, though, have to sell his stone for that. And still, the lion just chasing... This is obviously the priority for Sato, and Sato has to use the stone now. The tower, and it almost feels like he senses he can't hold this position. As the scout from Zupi, scout from Zupi shows up. Where are the archers, Sato? Doesn't have the archers with the group, and now these skirmishers are vulnerable. So good work there from Zupi. Obviously, if scouts would have shown up for Sato against this, there would have been archers in the group. So it would have been a little different. A great job there. Also, Zupi's done, just done a fantastic job of keeping his range units alive here. Sorry, I forgot to switch back to the KD. But he's kept his range units alive, which is what is going to be the key for him with his Civ. So, you have Crossbow. You now have Bodkin on the way. Again, you're going to have more HP for Vietnamese. Not, all the Skirmishers do not die because the Archers group up. Now, the Lion is still attacking. Okay, doesn't get any more kills. Damage control time for Sato. He's researching Elite Skirm, and it's actually a little faster than the Elite Skirm upgrade for Zupi. But this is a, a moment for Sato where he's lost quite a few units he's going to want. And so you've got more HP on your Skirms and on your crossbows, and Zupi's loving life right now. Absolutely loving life. He says, TC, uh, whatever. I'll make you react. And he also, he probably feels a little more of a need to do damage right now, simply because he did sell his stone, right? The last thing he wants is for the opponent's army to come up to his base. So the best thing you can do is run into theirs. Getting full army uh, armor now, excuse me, both of them. Now, Britons do not get extra range on their skirmishers. I never told you guys this, but it actually took me like a solid year to realize that. I was like making skirms with Britons, thinking they got eight range like the crossbows did. <laughs> and like, I wasn't... I was too fresh to realize the range difference by just watching the fights. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good here. So you're not fighting with extra range. 42 base HP on these skirms versus 35 base HP. And really good control from Zupi as he's trying to get range units in wherever he can. But he does overextend here, trying to do too much, perhaps. Obviously, this is something Sato is going to have to deal with, but looks like Sato will be able to deal with it. And this is where having faster ranges helps, okay? Like, Britons are still so sick in this matchup. And then when you think about Eco, 
You also have the cheaper town center still. For now, it's just a lot of range unit focus, something that Satoa is known for dominating with. If you guys saw my new kids on the block video on YouTube, uh, some of the other uploads with Satoa playing archer roles, his whole team is just real, real micro nerdy with the archer sieves. Oh, what's up, man? He says, hi, first time watching here. Uh, just played my first ranked game after almost 15 years of not playing. Your YouTube vids got me back to playing, so thanks for the nostalgia. Hey, welcome. Happy to see it. What Sato really needs is he needs to clear an army and he needs to counter. There's a lot of weak ones in here for Zoopy, despite having the extra HP. That's 190 HP out of 420. Blaze it. And here he takes another fight. So Zoopy's thinking like, ah, oh, push, push, push. He keeps running into armies, though. We have a close game between two very good civilizations with their ranged units. Ballistics has been in for Zoopy. Ballistics is on the way for Sato now. He's going to collect some stones so we can grab the cheap TC soon. I, I'm being a little crazy here, maybe, because he doesn't have the food. But I'd still love to see the farm upgrade come in. Because you don't have to spend wood for it with Vietnamese. Just go for it, man. I guess he needs farms right now, actually. So he needs to, needs to get more food income so we can afford that. Because he's making a lot of skirms. And we're now going to see Siege. You're going skirm v skirm. The potential to always make knights, of course, too. So you've got to be worried about going out with only skirms. But now we're going to see Siege from Zupi. And now you're going to see Sato with his attack move micro chase this down. And Zupi with some misplays here starts to lose his units. Okay, so personally, I feel like while, while Zupi's done a, a slightly better job at dictating the pace of the game over the last five minutes, like he's been the one forcing fights, I think that Sato is looking like the more comfortable player right now. Like, I, I truly think that. He's, he's taking better fights. He seems to not be making any poor decisions with where he puts his armies. Like, here he's clearing. Here he pushed back. Now he's in the middle. Does he micro? Of course he does. Needed that siege workshop a little earlier. He didn't know that Sato had siege yet, I don't think. So now he's got to scramble this down. But still has lots of army out here. And he just... I'm sorry, I looked away. He actually split there. As he will complete his siege workshop and now, of course, needs to run away with the Vils. Here he's cutting off Zupi's reinforcements. But Zupi did add the second town center here. Not a map where that's easy, but he's got to have two of those at least to produce villagers. We'll see if he can do that. And there's Sato with another TC. So this is like... This is a crazy game right now. And yes, Sato has more ranged units. And yes, yeah, ranged units produce faster out of his archer ranges or whatever. But now there's a lot of siege. I know his micro is good, but skirmishers are not so good at taking out Siege. Your first ranked game, you got Huskarl rated to death. Oh, that's painful. <laughs> Welcome to Age of Empires. Welcome back, bud. Oh, man. Interesting engagement here. And the micro from Sato is just so beautiful, man. So good. He should be able to easily take out some Skirms or Scorpion, but he'll take a one for one if he can get it. And, oh, he doesn't get it. That was a poor attempt there from Sato. Didn't really kill anything. And now you'll take a one for one and you don't get it if you're Zoopy. We have a quick little repair here from Sato. He's thinking maybe I'll add a stable. And his siege fires, so he will take out the scorpion. And now you have Zoopy falling back. Two TCs. Zoopy now adding another archer range because he feels like he needs more numbers. So this game is both like uh, an interesting one in terms of gameplay, but I also think it's like an interesting strategic game because we can talk about how Vietnamese can do as technically they're an anti-archer sieve, anti-archer archer sieve, uh, which is very rare, right? Like goths are an anti-archer. I guess you could say they're anti a lot infantry sieve. Like, that's normally how it works. You don't make the same unit, but like also if we ever see aspects where Vietnamese are dominant, I think we're still seeing why Britons are king. Because Zupi has, has tried so hard, but as the legendary song goes, it doesn't even matter. There's ranged units everywhere. And Sato, obviously, just feeling at home right now. As you see that Manganel rock, this knight could come in and help out a lot. This is a big problem for that army. This is a big problem for this army. Sato is just a beast with his micro. Just a beast. He even micro down a Manganel there, I believe. Now, check this out, though, from Zupi. Zupi gets a little counterattack. Don't ask me where that came from. I won't be able to tell you. 
I, I could tell you that the golds right now for Sato are a little questionable. This gold here and this gold here. You also have a neutral gold in the middle. Then exposed gold, neutral gold. So, like, I think two out of the three golds are good. Yeah, like, this back gold is good for Zupi. But Sato was just pulled off of gold. Still has to deal with this army. And he doesn't have any gold income right now. That means his siege production will slow. His knight production will, will slow. And this game, like, really couldn't be much closer right now. Uh, great job from Zupi to recover with numbers. And I, I like the idea to add that third range. A big fight here for Sato on the hill. But there's a healthy-ish group of skirms coming in. See how the fight goes. Missed shot there from Zupi. And Zupi... Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. His skirms on the hill got hit. His siege got hit. He still has units here, which, like, Sato, you've got to be careful, man. You've got to deal with this. He's still microing. Now, of course, villagers could go down, and Sato could snowball this to a victory. He loses one mangonel, though. Still lots of red dots on the mini-map that Zupi's moving around, and we're going to see a big shot here. Ready? Okay, one for one, and... Oh, he's going to run away now. Like, this type of stuff does add up, though. This here, still doing something. The worker efficiency last minute, very low for Sato. That, that also rhymed, which I'm rather impressed by. Yeah, 55% for 70% over the last minute. And so range units still higher for Zupi. I think we're seeing how his little eco raids here have led to a stronger economy. Look at this, still running away. And that stronger economy has allowed him to catch up here. Just absolute flood of skirms and crossbows. And still rolling forward with Siege. Now, both players on stone. Sato can drop a castle now, though. So he has the opportunity to drop a castle. I would say a castle here makes a lot of sense. This area of his base must be so annoying for him. Must also be annoying for Zupi, though, because anytime he patrols this way, he runs into a workshop, and he's got to be paranoid about that. We are definitely going to see that HP difference come into play here for Zupi if we're talking equal fights. This is a good fight for him. He's got the hill, so he's doing more damage and receiving less. Plus, he's got the HP. But I love how he's now switching sides. So you want ranged units? Okay, I'll make ranged units. I'm Vietnamese, bruh. Big fight. Sato probably like, what? What is happening now? Because he still wants to build a castle, but there's no castle he can really build comfortably. He wanted this hill. Probably doesn't want to build a castle at home. And we're seeing now, guys, that... It, it feels kind of awkward to know what to do in this situation if you're Sato. You want to go Knights now in this position because it's Skirm and Mangonel. But, you know, if you make the Knights, crossbows could still come out in the long term. As I think this Siege Workshop will be taken care of. I like how Zupi added the Ram. Zupi with so many groups here. Like, he rolled around with Siege back here. like, And then he's got Siege here. And then he's got Skirms here. But the knights come out, they do have armor, and this is where you're going to see a lot more crossbow queued. Because unless you have plus two armor, even smaller groups of crossbows with ballistics are going to do a pretty good job against these knights. Like, this is still going to be a pretty significant loss for Sato. I guess even skirms are pretty good against knights that don't have bloodlines and plus two armor. You saw that there. All right. Sorry, so much going on. 120 pop for both. Isn't this game incredible? This is so crazy. But again, worker efficiency last minute. 50% for Zuto. 73% for Zupi. His eco is only getting stronger. And here he comes running forward with villagers. And he is going to benefit from that good economy and go up to the Imperial Age. All right. So this is where you really have to think about. And I talked about it in a lot of games recently. You have to think about what you want to do with your long-term unit comp. Um, if you go only skirms, the opponent can go horsemen, and we've already seen Sato do that. So you don't necessarily want to go full skirm. I think going arbs is good, right? Or a mix, like we've done in Castle Age, is always good. Rats and archers are an absolutely bonkers unit. Like, I think they have 10 pierce armor? Yeah, I think they have 10 pierce armor when they're fully upgraded. Seven base attack or eight base attack. Anyways, mass, mass rats and archers just absolutely destroy. 
Like, nothing kills them unless it's Heavy Siege or Paladins. None of which Britons really have. Doopy's like, I got more HP. I can do this. <laughs> and he runs underneath the town center. He doesn't even care. Skirms are tanky already, and then add in the Vietnamese bonuses. I love that. And so anyways, as you look at this castle, you got to start to think, like, are you going to go Ratsons? Are you going to go Trebs? Are you going to go both, right? Now, obviously, worst case scenario for a player here is to lose their entire army before Imp. So you don't want to do that if you're Zoopy. So there's always a massive risk with this. But I love his pressure. Look at that Eco KD, guys. What a stat. What a crazy stat. As, as Sato is going to come over here to try and change that. It's been all offense for Zupi ever since. His eco has been great behind this. He hasn't placed a single piece of wall. Uh, that's not true exactly, but he hasn't really walled much, I should say. And now he's going to get his upgrades. Now, a cool little bonus the Vietnamese get is they get conscription for free, which means that they produce military units faster, starting an imp. So, and then, like, sometimes if you've got a forward castle, you want to go trebs, but then... You're also torn, like, ooh, what if they get conscription, defend their castle, and make more army than me? So you don't really need to worry about that as much here. I really like the defensive castle from Zupi now. And he has made a few of those rats and archers. Looks like this was tracked somehow. These knights loop in. I doubt they're going to do too much harm in the long run. That should be tracked and dealt with. 120 kills versus 128. This is an amazing game. If you look at how Sato is treating this, he's still making skirms. But he's got the worst skirmishers. There are those Rattans that don't have armor yet, don't have elite. This is just a mistake from Zupi because he's probably microing somewhere else. Uh, it's sad to see those Rattans go down. Zupi only 7 on gold. Yeah, I see that. He, he really needs to take this gold, which he's going to do now. I'd love to see a castle here, actually. He's probably microing this army at the moment. An Imperial Skirm is super worth it here, by the way. Super worth it. Does anyone know the stat difference? Can someone tell me? Because we rarely see it. I hope we see it in this game. Love how he showed up with the Trebs. Has army to protect the Trebs. I like how he knows what Sato is going to do. Taking some engagements before Sato will get upgrades. As he's working on his final armor now for his range units. Okay, so plus one attack, but how much HP difference? Does it take them to like 50 HP from 42? Plus one attack, plus one pierce, and plus one bonus. It does, they do additional bonus damage too? Dang, man. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's been confirmed. So the Britons, they want to make the ranged units. Vietnamese have better ranged units. They have... Similar economy, at least. Anyways, we haven't seen that upgrade yet because he really isn't floating a lot of resources. He's, he's making rats and archers instead. Now, the reason I like rats and archers here is because, one, your castles are not being pressured. So you have the time to do that. Two, the opponent is going to go light calf here. Like, every single time, a high-level player is going to switch into light calf. It's a unit that doesn't cost gold that's pretty good against skirm. The rats and archer is definitely your go-to now that you've got castles up and you know he's probably going to switch like you're you're forcing the fight right now if you're zoopy constantly forcing the fight so he stopped with the trebs and just said okay i'm gonna mass ratans with my skirms also getting some upgrades that would indicate he's gonna go for cav obviously opponent skirms would do decent against ratans i suppose and i didn't see sato get warwolf but if he has warwolf that's one of the most frustrating things to face up against Britain Trebs do not miss and can absolutely smash, yet clearly he doesn't have Warwolf. Otherwise, if he had Warwolf, he would take out all of these Trebs. And look at this, guys. Sato's not finished yet. Azupi's going to have to back away right now. See the Light Cav show up. They don't have Castle Age armor yet or Imp armor. We see a ranged unit force going out for Sato. Is this not a ridiculous game? 185 pop. Like, I don't know how Sato is still alive, to be honest. And I don't know how Zupi was able to have such good economy behind his pushes in castle leads. Like, both players have astounded me with kind of... in different ways. HP stays the same. Well, if he would research it, here we go. Okay, so here's Imp Skirm. 
So HP stays the same. They did get plus one attack. I saw the plus one armor. Bonus damage doesn't show. But now you've got a real strong unit against archers. And in this group, he doesn't have many rats in, so he's going to have to be careful. Sato goes in, though. Sato wants some damage. The imp skirms are there. Dude, these guys got some real shields right now. Let's go. Doesn't really have enough. Should deal with it, though. And we are going to see a pounce here from Sato. He sees that castle. He wants to take care of it. He's about to have the final armor upgrade completed for his light cav. Meaning his light cav are going to have six pierce armor. A rat and archer right now, a non-elite does two damage then. Because they do... Uh, sorry, they do 10 damage, so I'm wrong on that. 6 plus 4, so they would do 4 damage a hit. And the Lycav only have 60 HP, but there's not a lot of Ratsens in this group. Only Ratsens are back here. And we now have Siege for Sato, so Sato's going to pounce on this. And Sato is likely going to clear all of this. As he's catching up on attack upgrades, he really needs to get access to his farms again. And man, these Imp Skirms, though. <laughs> that extra attack, actually. Actually, the extra attack's a pretty big deal here, right? Because they do two damage versus the light cap instead of one. And what the? Sato lost his TC, and they're like, okay, we're going to the farms. This will be taken care of, though. But man, is that hard work. Now, naturally, you're going to have that next wave come forward for Zupi. Zupi will know there's Trebs out there. Maybe we'll try and deal with that. And he's got his own light cap. Still no imp armor. He's working on that, so he's behind on those upgrades. But he's got 80 HP because he gets bloodlines. So for now, it's like pretty even, I guess. We do have more rats and archers in queue. And more rats and archers on the map for Zupi. He's actually hit 200 pop here. A little bit of raiding over here with imp skirms. I like that. He's got two relics for the late game. I love this. these castles too. Very defensive. And here he goes with his light cap. Here's his main group of rats and archers. And I hope we see Elite soon. Like elite Rats and Archer with Light Cav is just impossible for Britons to kill. Feels like it anyways. Because your range units don't, do not do anything against the Ratsons. Love this from Zupi. I think he realizes how strong his position is in the middle with the Ratsons. He's now getting Elite. And he's going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop with the Light Cav. And guys, is he good or what? Look at this. Another raid coming in. Same time. Different area, while also massing in the middle. The, he's, he's truly incredible. It's a shame Zupi doesn't play a little bit more. I think he's a little inconsistent in events, too. But the whole point of this event hosted by OGN is to give the non-top 10... Um, I, I, it might be the non-top 16. I, I should have fact-checked, but anyways. To give them some, some reasons to fight, to see who's the best of the best there. And as we see Yeoman now coming in for Sato, he's going to try and switch into Arbalest. Which gives him additional range. So that's a really good tech to get. But he is just being raided everywhere he looks at the moment. As the rats and archers have been masked. The trebs are now here. And as Zupi's forcing reactions on the side. He's now going to go for the kill in the middle. So 7 plus 4 attack. 10 pierce armor guys. 10 pierce armor. Which means the arbs do 1 damage. Uh yeah but T90 they hit it from further. That's true they do. That's, look, look at that. They're a Huskarl archer. Don't ask me how. They've got these tiny little paper hats. I don't, I don't understand how they're high pure summer. Anyways, Sato still trying to deal with this. His population's still good, but the raids continue. And Sato, even though his pop's 160, it's kind of uncommon to see players resign in these positions. He knows. He taps out. And that is like, okay, that was an incredible game overall. That was a ridiculous game. That said... I really think we got to see some unique things there with the Vietnamese. From the economy, to the imp skirms, to the rats and archers. The fact that their stable line is pretty decent. And they've got the, the light cap available with bloodlines. Vietnamese are a go-to civilization. Not, not like Goths. Not, not like other civs that might count as Britons. But they're a really solid civilization to go for. Because they do kind of what Britons do similarly or I guess with the tanking is better. Uh, Britons are about the range. Vietnamese is about the tank. I still think that the key in this game was probably how Zupi approached early in. Uh, making it to Castle Age faster made a difference. But also, remember that little raid here on the gold. It was like, that wasn't dealt with. And then there, like, everything was even. And then Sato did a few tiny things. Or, or sorry, Zupi did a few things to Sato. Where Sato, like... Couldn't keep an army queue for a minute. 
And then Zupi just snowballed it. That was a really fun game. Yeah, the problem with Vietnamese and why competitively you won't see them picked over Britons is because I think you have to have a couple more things go right to fall into that sweet spot with Vietnamese. Whereas with Britons, like, you've got a sheep bonus in Dark Age, guaranteed bonus. Your archer range works faster right when you produce it. So it takes longer for things to kick in for Vietnamese, but I do think they are an underrated civilization. And if played properly, it could be really tough to deal with. So well played there, Zupi. I was so excited to show you guys this game. I was like, I need to stream this right now. YouTube has to talk about this. I want everyone to freak out. I want this to beat the Legend of Corner Boy with views. It was just an amazing Age of Empires 2 game. The type of game that makes you want to play the game because there's so much cool strategy and action, but also the type of game that makes you want to just watch because it was so good, you're like, I can't even compete. Nope, I give up. I'm going to keep, keep T90 employed. <laughs> watch him cast more games. Uh, there's the eco there. Uh, good wood count, good food, of course. But the Golden Stone was pretty high there for Zoopy. Naturally, the KD was pretty close. Um, this is always an interesting stat. So when you lose a lot of vills, you want to add more of them, right? So I don't know if anyone can do the quick math on the difference between 187 and 142 and then multiply that by 50. But uh, Sato had to create a lot more vills in this game after losing some and, of course, spent a lot of food on that. Had he not lost those villagers, maybe could have had more light cav before the rats and archers came out. It's obviously very tricky. I was also a little surprised to see this. I, I wouldn't consider Zupi to really be the fastest player. Sato typically just blowing people away with his, his speed, but maybe being reactive there was the issue. Uh, and the, the ELO there? No, no, no. These guys are not 2250. These guys are like 2350. Sato actually was two, 2K5 recently on the ladder. So um, while that kind of has something to do with Ladder not being as active recently. I think these players are tippity top and definitely two of the very best. FYI T90, Imp Skirm equals plus one attack, plus one bonus damage to archer slash cav archers, plus one pierce armor, same HP, and plus 5% accuracy? What? Plus 5% accuracy? Did they really have to throw that in? <laughs> It feels like, I guess it's just Age of Empires 2, right? You've got these tiny little details that, uh, you know, you normally forget about. But I, that's interesting. Okay, so it's 95% accuracy as opposed to 90% accuracy. That's, that's something I didn't know. Today I learned.